So we've got some additional items, talk sports, Sky Sports News. Um, yeah, so take a seat there, Ernie. We'll help, help yourself to a drink. Um, this is all just to repeat under embargo until tomorrow at six, and we'll begin with Anton at Sky Sports News. Hi, Hi. Nice to see you. Thank you. Um, welcome back. How does it feel to be uh, back there in the England Bash game? Um, yeah, it's obviously really exciting for me to kind of be back in this environment and be back with the girls, especially after they've just gone and won the Euros. And I think I'm just excited to kind of get going this week and see where it takes us. Yeah, it's not obviously your first time with the English setup. So how different does it feel coming off this summer? Honestly, it doesn't feel that different, but I've only been here for one day so far. So I don't know, maybe it'll feel different with, with the days coming up. But so far, it's been pretty relaxed and the girls have been really welcoming after that. I obviously haven't been here for a, a year now, I think. So it's been really good to get back into it. Yeah, you were part of Serena's first call up and then she quite openly said, you know, Ebony needs to go away and get more game time. What conversations yeah. have you had with the coach and, and what have you done to kind of get back into her plans? Um, she obviously told me what I needed to work on, kind of the things that she she saw me as my strengths, but st the stuff that were kind of holding me back from being part of this environment. And I think for me, the main thing was going back to club, playing consistently and kind of doing what I do well consistently. And I think recently I've kind of been in that form, which has probably earned me this call up. That's a, is that quite a difficult conversation to have with someone? I mean, it definitely is, but I think it's nice that Serena sits down with you and has those conversations, is really openly honest with you and tells you that rather than kind of maybe being in a situation where you, you're not getting called up and you also don't know why. Talk me through the last few months, because they've been pretty hectic for you. Obviously, you're out in Louisville, you eventually got traded there, you started really well, then you didn't get game time, then you went to Houston for, for a big, on, a, on a big deal yeah. and you exploded so you must have been up and down yeah it's been full of ups and downs the past few months I think going into pre-season I kind of was looking forward to starting the season off with Louisville and that didn't really go how I wanted it to how I expected I guess and I think when the, when the Houston opportunity came up I knew it was going to be a good one for me and when I got there I just wanted to hit the ground running which I managed to do and I think for me, it was just kind of get back playing, get my confidence back and kind of get scoring again. And I think one of the main things that I've always said that I need to be better with is consistency. And I think I've, tr I've found that recently. So I just need to keep that going into the rest of the season. Yeah, you've talked about you've obviously coming into a side and playing under the pressure of a big transfer fee. But also now you're coming into camp and potentially taking over from England's all-time leading scorer. That's, that's a difficult position to be in as well, I presume. Yeah, I think Ellen. Ellen's obviously done huge things for the game and she's she's done really big things for women's football and for her to be able to go out on such a high after winning the Euros is really good for her. And I think, like you said, it it leaves a spot open in, in the team that probably hasn't been open as, as big as it is now for the last few years. But I just think it, it creates more competition and, you know, there's a lot of really good players... I guess fighting for that spot so for me I just kind of have to do everything that I can do and you know work on what I need to work on and I think being around these players on this camp and just like knowing what they can do their ability it's only going to make me a better player. Finally where were you how were you watching the final talk us through it? Um, I actually had a game on that day so oh, that's like, cool. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, but I, I was able to watch the game so I watched the game in the morning I think I watched the first half Sorry, <clears throat> I watched the first half when I was at lunch and then I watched the second half back in my room and then, yeah, I went and played a game on the evening, so, yeah. Good quiet hotel celebration. And yeah, exactly. Oh, that's that's <laughs> tragic. too wild. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ebony. No problem. Thanks, Anton. We'll go to TalkSport. Um, what do you think that the Lionesses winning that tournament can do for, for football in this country generally, but particularly for the women's game and the the young girls that now have a probably a, an even better opportunity to get into it yeah I think I think for a long time um, the England team has been like a, I guess role models for young girls but I think to go out and do what they just did this summer is it's going to make even more people look up to them and make even more people do want to do what they do and I think for the women's game I hope that it kind of elevates the women's game in terms of money players teams just how much investment goes into the game and the women's game is growing I think we all know that but it's also got a long way to go and I hope that the win of the Euros this summer kind of pushes that in the right direction uh, and you talked about how interesting the last few weeks months have been for you with the uh, the change of club you seem to have you seem to be taking it all in your all in your stride but it it must have been a hell of a roller coaster. Yeah, it was definitely a lot and I think 
picking up and moving all your stuff halfway across the country is different across the US especially is different to doing it in this country you know I think everywhere is so far from each other and it's a completely different life and not knowing anyone at the new team that I went to was definitely made it harder but the girls have been so good with me like helping me settle in and for me I think I was kind of so frustrated with my time at Louisville that I just wanted to kind of get into a new environment and just show people what I could do because I was frustrated that I wasn't getting the chance to do that so for me that the move was as much as it was hectic and there was a lot going on it was something that I definitely needed to do. So excitement for moving to Houston and scoring all those goals and now the excitement of being in the England squad again and World Cup qualification um, almost there. It must be a, a great time to be a footballer. Yeah, it definitely is. And I think, like you said, World Cup qualification is almost there. I think we just need one more point within these two games. And I think the World Cup's going to give, I guess, another motivation for all of us to keep working and keep pushing. We know we're in a good place, obviously just winning the Euros, but we also know that there's a long way to go and the World Cup's another level. So I think for me and the rest of the girls, we know that we're going to keep pushing and we're going to keep working because, you know, we want to be at the World Cup next year and we want to do good things there. And you've got the homecoming at Stoke next week. Full house, yeah. again, another level of excitement. Yeah, definitely. I think um, the Euros, that's another thing that the Euros is going to do, um, probably increase attendances and... We know that we've got that full crowd next week and I think um, it's going to be good for the girls just to get back out there again, get back playing for their for their country. I think it's come around pretty fast from the end of the Euros from what I spoke to the girls about, but we're all excited. Match will go to Molly at the time, please. Hey, Ebony. Hey. Um, I know Serena was, was quite vocal in, in wanting that under-23s team and what it can do for a player's development. So I wonder what it's done for you and does it has it given you kind of that bridge to the senior team, I suppose, and, and a time to develop certain areas internationally as well as what you've been doing at club? Yeah, I think it's exactly that. Um, it's been a bridge between the two and I think it's it kind of gives you a good kind of bridge to come into this environment whenever you're called upon rather than, I guess, not being involved in international football at all and then one day randomly being called into the senior team and you haven't really experienced it for a long time. And I think... Um, for me, obviously, playing at club is a little different to playing internationally. So with the 23 setup that they had last year, they had they got some good fixtures in for us. We were able to play top-class opponents, and I think that's really good for me and the rest of the girls who it's allowing to stay in the international setup. And for your time in America generally, obviously, you've kind of been away from quite a lot of the girls over here. Is it quite nice in a way that you can kind of go over there and show what you can do? And maybe you have been out of the spotlight a little bit compared to probably what we see in the WSL and what we do week in and week out over here? Yeah, I think um, for me, it was kind of just about performing. And I think you can obviously do that wherever you are. But like you said, over there, I feel like I have a little less pressure on me to perform, not being in the WSL in the league with kind of majority of the squad where they are. And I think just being out in the US, I'm, I'm able to express myself as much as I want, um, work on everything that I know I need to work on to be here. And then but when when performances are good and performances are in your call up, I can come back here and like show show what I'm about. And just finally for me, I suppose for, for England fans that maybe haven't seen too much of you that maybe only watch the WSL, can you give them an idea of the kind of player you are and what you hope to bring to this England team? Um, yeah, so my main position is the number nine and I, I'd say I'm really direct and, and fast going forward. I think in front of goal, one of the main things that I'm really good at is being clinical, but it's also something that I want to carry on improving on. And I think, yeah, what, I just like being direct. I want to go forward. I want to score goals. And I think that's what I'm all about. That's what I try and do at club. And I think that's what I'm going to try and bring into this environment. Thanks, Molly. We'll go to Simon. In standard, please. Obviously, there's now this this void with with Ellen not being here. Has Serena sort of laid out to you and Alicia that you know either of you can take the number nine? It's up for grabs. It's not necessarily Alicia because she was at the Euros. Um, I haven't actually spoken to Serena about the situation at all, but I think, like I said before, Ellen's Ellen's left kind of a gap that was kind of full for a few years, and I think so. It's obvious to everyone that 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 position is up for grabs and Alessia was at the Euros and she did really well at the Euros so she's obviously fighting for that spot but I think for her and for myself and for Beth for anyone competing for that competition it's really good to have competition and to not just be the person who Ellen's left and now you're straight in I think the competition will be healthy and I think it'll be really good for all of us. And for you moving to the US at a young age how did you develop on and off the pitch from that time? 
Um, I think off the pitch, it's obviously made me grow as a person. You know, I've moved away from everything that I know and everyone that I know, and I've kind of had to be a lot more independent, um, which has been good for me. And I think on the pitch, I think it's a completely different style of play. It's kind of playing against different players that I've never played against before. And I think that helps me grow as a player and working on different things that I probably wouldn't have to work on so much playing in the WSL is making me improve. And just lastly, when you're in that hotel room and you, you're watching the final, how much hungrier does that make you to be part of the squad? It definitely does because I think any footballer wants to be a part of those big moments. I mean, you want to be a part of every moment leading up to it, but I think the end goal is those major tournaments. So for me, I think it makes me so much hungrier to kind of push on and to be a part of those squads in the future. Thanks, Simon. We'll go to Tom at the Telegraph at the back. Tom Gary. Thank you, Ebony. Congratulations on the call-up. I just wanted to ask you, um, when you heard that you'd got the call-up, do you remember who the first person was that you wanted to tell? Um, yeah, I think it was my family, to be honest. Uh, they've obviously supported me from the very start. And I think whenever I've got good news, it's always been them that I've wanted to tell. So to be able to go to them with that good news was really good for me. And did some of the current, um, you know, now teammates, but some of the squad reach out to you with any words of sort of congratulations or, or advice? Yeah, a lot of them did say congratulations and just told me to come here and enjoy it. And I think, obviously, for the, the girls, a lot of them have been here for a while and been involved in the setup. They know what it's like. And for me, coming back in after a year, as much as it's so exciting, it's, it can be nerve-wracking too. And I think the girls make it a lot easier to be here and to kind of just settle in. Yeah, because you're the only player now coming into the group from playing outside of Europe, club yeah. football. And do, how... How do they work to try and make you feel like one, one of the same and one, one of the 23? Yeah, I think, I mean, they don't treat me any different to anyone else. So it's not like they treat me like I am the only player coming in from outside of Europe. They just treat me like one of the girls, one of the players. And I think we're, we're obviously all aiming for the same thing. The end goal is the same for all of us. So we're, we're all a team at the end of the day. Thank you. Great to see you back. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Any other questions? Just yeah, sure. Sandra from The Sun. Hi, Ebony. Congrats on the, on the cap. Um, you've had your first cap against Northern Ireland and, you know, that's a long time gone since then. I mean, how do you feel? You talked about the difference between club and international. How do you feel you've developed internationally since then? And, and how do you feel? The, how's the camp feeling now compared to then? Um, honestly, I think it's hard to judge because of not being in it for so long. And I've only obviously been on this camp for one day so far. But I think... Um, just being around these players of such high quality day in, day out is probably going to be able for me to see where I'm at and where I need to be and where I need to get to. And I think obviously being in the 23 setup has been, has allowed me to play those international fixtures. But again, I think 23s is a lot different to senior. So for me to see the level I'm at, I think I'm going to have to go through this week. And then at the end of this week, I'll be able to, to judge better. Thank you. Thanks, Sandra. Um, thanks, everyone. Thanks for your time, Ebony. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.